Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah has blessed us as being part of the ummah of the Quran. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. This month of Ramadan is not just the month of fasting. It is the month of the Quran. Shahru Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Quran. Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah that the month of Ramadan is the month in which the Quran was revealed. And that's the only time Shahru Ramadan is mentioned in the Quran in its name like that. And immediately after that, Allah does not speak about the fasting, but rather he speaks about the Quran. Now, one of the things we need to realize is for Allah to give so much of importance to the Quran every single year and to let this month come back every year. He could have said it's once every 10 years or like Hajj, once a lifetime, you guys have to fast. No, he said every year, this month of Ramadan will keep coming back. And what you need to do is you need to read the Quran understand it, put it into practice, correct your recitation. It is my book. I've sent it to you. I want you to give it importance. It's the most important book in existence. It's the most important message ever. It is the message of Allah. It is that which Allah wants you to know. It is what your maker whom you're going to return to would like you to read, to go through, to understand the context. You may, for example, have questions. You will get those questions answered, bearing in mind that the way you grew up, you might not see certain things as normal because of the way you grew up, because of the way you were indoctrinated as you were little. But if you had seen other societies, other communities, other nations, other civilizations, and the way they did things, you would probably realize, you know what, we were actually wrong and backward as much as we thought we were so civilized, mashallah. So the criteria is the Quran. That's why Allah says, nasi wa bayyinatim min al huda wal furqan. Allah shows you the, uh, it, that this is guidance for mankind, and at the same time, the signs of guidance and criterion. Criterion meaning, not only does the Quran show you what's right and wrong, but the Quran will give you, or when you practice upon it, it gives you the ability to distinguish between right and wrong, because that ability is something that very few have. Very few nations have the ability to distinguish between right and wrong. And if you take it further down, very few people have the ability to distinguish between right and wrong. If you'd like the divine ability of distinguishing between right and wrong, it is in Revelation. You will get that God-given gift of looking at things and saying, this is not right. For example, when it comes to acts of worship, as believers, we say we should worship our maker alone. I don't want to render a single act of worship to anyone or for anyone besides my maker. This is the month of Ramadan. It's the month of fasting, but Allah is polishing our acts of worship. He's polishing our discipline. He's polishing for us so much more, our knowledge of who he is, what his message is. He says it's important. And for this reason, you see, over time, the scholars have taught us and our predecessors have taught us that you must try and cover the entire Quran at least once during this month of Ramadan. I know some people are weak, some people are slow, and it might take you two Ramadans, it might take you three Ramadans, but you need to cover it from the beginning to the end. And this is why in the month of Ramadan, most of the masjids, most of the masajid, which is the plural of masjid, or the houses of Allah, the places of worship, they would be reciting the Quran from different parts. Many of them would love, and they do cover from the beginning to the end, the entire Quran in the night prayer. But the problem is, many of us enjoy the melodious recitation and we say, oh wow, this guy reads so well. Did you understand it? No, I didn't. But it was so lovely. The reading was absolutely stunning, mashallah. It was. But the question is, the rite of the Quran extends way beyond a melodious recitation. Are you going to make an effort to understand this Quran when Allah has given it to you? It's the guidance, the book of guidance. 
That is the eternal book of guidance, subhanAllah. Allah's given it to you. You have it. It's there. It's like people telling me, you know, I'm looking for this and this, but you've got it right with you. No one else has it, subhanAllah. Meaning you have it. You're part of the ummah. The ummah has it. The others, they don't even want to look at it. Subhanallah, but members of the ummah are not looking at it. What's going to happen? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Afala yatadabbaroon al-Qur'an. What a beautiful reminder. Allah saying, will they not ponder deeply over the verses of the Qur'an, over the Qur'an? Subhanallah, Allah says, we must ponder over its verses. The whole reason why the Qur'an was revealed was in order for, for the verses to be reflected upon. Kitabun anzalnahu ilayka mubarakun liyaddabbaru ayatihi wa liyatadhakkara ulul albab. A book that we revealed, speaking about the Quran. Blessed, it's blessed. You know, we say uh, Ramadan is a Mubarak month. Mubarak means blessed. Blessed. So Ramadan is a Mubarak month. Allah says this book is Mubarak. The Quran is Mubarak. Allah says that. Mubarakun. It is blessed. لِيَدَّبَّرُوا ayatihi. We revealed it in order for its verses to be pondered over. وَلِيَتَذَكَّرَ أُولُوا الْأَلْبَابِ And for it to be a reminder for those with sound intellect. So if you're really intelligent, really sharp, really, really intelligent, you will look at the Quran and let it be a means of you achieving great understanding and pondering over its verses and looking at what the Almighty has said. It's amazing. It cannot be wrong. That is the word of Allah. The Quran itself, many people have some things to say about the Quran, meaning people who, who are not Muslim, perhaps people who uh, dislike the Quran or dislike the Muslims, they try to find fault in it by saying something or the other that seems negative. In all honesty, if you know the context in which verses were revealed and you understand the verses and you've learned how to adopt rulings from that, or you've seen, or you have learned rules that have been extracted from the Quran by the experts, you then begin to understand everything and it becomes clear. It is a book filled with goodness, with justice, with kindness, with high morals and with so much of benevolence. Allah Almighty has revealed these books over time. Many of the books, unfortunately, their authenticity is known to have been perhaps lost. But the Quran, one brother was asking me, how do you know the Quran is the correct book? Well, there are so many things I could say, but it needs a heart of a believer to understand this. And to be fair and just, you name all the books that you believe were revealed by the Almighty. Name all of them. Take a look at one of them that has the least discrepancies according to the enemy. That's a good question. The one that has the least discrepancies according to the enemy. You know, in Arabic, there is a saying that true virtue is what the enemy has actually borne witness to. So if the enemy is bearing witness to something, and that is true virtue, at least the enemy will say that this, the Quran has the least discrepancies from all the other books available. And we as believers will say, well, to us, it is no discrepancies, subhanAllah. So it's either one of the two. The believers say no discrepancies. Those who don't like it or who are enemies or who consider themselves, for example, not following it, they'll say, look, we must admit, if we're fair, we must admit that this has the least discrepancy. So that's it. You're either following it because you believe that it's the best and there's no discrepancy, or you've got to admit that is the book. So this is why we say it's the gift of Allah. And when Allah has gifted us to this degree, make use of that book. Read it. Like I say, we need to put into practice what we read and what we understand from that which 
we're supposed to be putting into practice. And therefore, it will change the way we think. It will change the way we look at things. We become reliant on the maker himself. We don't become angry and agitated over every, anything and everything. You know, we know where to channel our energies. We know what to become upset with, what not to. We know the level and limit of sadness. We know the level and limit of happiness. All this is from the Quran. Allah tells us not to be too attached to things that that we find on earth, we are attached to the maker, the giver of life. He gave life to everyone. He will take life away from everyone whenever he wishes. Those who don't have children, for example, pray to Allah for children. When they get those children, they say, my children, subhanAllah. And that's not a bad thing. They are your children, but temporarily, ultimately they belong to Allah. So Allah says, we gave them to you, we took them away. It was just a short span of time. We entrusted you with this. We allowed you to enjoy and to say, my child and my son, an example, or my daughter. And we allowed you to mix and to enjoy and we gave you company while you're on earth. Live your life in such a way that you will have the best company in the hereafter. So the Quran, my brothers and sisters, how much effort are you making? How much effort are you making to study it, to learn it, to read it? Do you spend some time on a daily basis? Are you prepared to make some more time? Knowing that every letter you read, you're getting a reward. And in Ramadan, you're getting a greater reward. And if you don't speak the Arabic language, yes, it is important, very important to read it in Arabic. But it is equally important to understand its meanings in a language that you know. So give it half, half of your time. I'm going to spend half the time doing this and half the time doing that. In that way, you will definitely achieve great success. Because if you don't make the time and discipline yourself, you're not going to achieve. My brothers and sisters, this Ramadan is Ramadan with a difference. I am going to spend much more time with the Quran and I invite you all to spend maximum time with the Quran and to promise Allah that even beyond Ramadan, I'm going to ensure that I use my time wisely and spend some time with your word, your book, in order to understand the message and enjoy it. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallama ala nabina Muhammad. ليلة القدر خير من ألف شهر